Hi there. Are we in the wrong place? Is that what happened? Well, you're in the right place. Those of you who are here, I think I've done something wrong again, technically. Mucking around with trying to get things to work. And, uh, you know, sometimes I sh pop up in the wrong place. But that's okay. We're here. Everybody's going to show up eventually. If you are on the other, ch if you could go to the other channel and tell them to come here, that would be awesome. Um, let's just hang out for a minute. Just the small number of us here. You, Lisa, Rose Ranch Art. Um, let's tell them to come over here. I mean, I could go over there if you want. Should we do that? I'll go over there. All right, I'm going to quit this, and we're going to go over there. Or oh, not. <laughs> Joanna, all right, if you're here, then hopefully everybody else is going to show up. All right, good. You want to go back and play the end of the song? You know, I am going to play it again because it was pretty nice, and it will give me a chance to, uh, you know, gather myself. Draw with me. I'm Danny Gregory. What an amazing gallery of galleries, right? So this is what we did last week. We drew imaginary galleries, portraits of, you know, our fictitious ancestors or family members in our fictitious, I don't know, vestibule. That was really fun. And there were so many different and interesting and creative versions of what I did in the f on last week's show. So thank you, everybody who participated and posted. It's really nice to see all of your work. Um, it's nice to see all of you here, too. I apologize for popping up in the wrong place, but, you know, that's part of the fun. Um, I see my pal Jean-Christophe de Flin is here from Paris. Jean-Christophe, it's so nice to see you again. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in person one of these days. One of these days you're going to come and visit me here in Phoenix. And um, so many of you are Draw With Me regulars, so it's nice to see you, Joanna, and Lenore, Lisa, and so forth. So thank you all for um, coming here. And um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we are going to need art supplies, as usual. We're going to need some, uh, just some, if you want to, a piece of paper, like a regular piece of paper. But if you want to, also an envelope. Any size, any type, an envelope. And if you don't have an envelope, I'll show you how to make this, turn this piece of paper into an envelope, or any piece of paper into an envelope. So, that's going to be one of the many amazing things that we go over today. Um, and 
I'll tell you why in a minute. But in the meantime, let's just gather our wits about us. We were traumatized by jumping from one place to another this morning. Um, you know, this is yet another kind of episode in the lengthy sitcom that has been the last 13 months. Sitcom, not really, right? Um, but it has been, a, it's been like a Netflix series. We keep hoping that there won't be another season, but every so often there is. Took you to, uh, my friends in Europe, it seems like, um, you know, you're doing reruns and, uh, that's not pleasant either. So I'm hoping that soon by the summer, by this autumn, we will all be feeling safer and able to see each other and be together and go on adventures and draw in various places that we have been uh, kept from for so long. <clears throat> so, you know, I think, oh, tonight, my wife JJ and I are going on our first outing to see music being performed. First outing since we came to Phoenix, first outing since the pandemic began. We're going to a concert of we don't know much about it, but it's called um, Ring of Fire, and it is the music of Johnny Cash. I have no idea what that's going to actually mean. Is it going to be um, country musicians, rock and roll musicians, opera stars? We don't know. And I haven't. I, it's one of those things where I kind of don't want to know too much because I want to really be surprised and amazed. It's going to be outdoors, so you know, I mean, we can't pretend that this thing is over. So. We can sort of do stuff a little bit that we didn't do in the past. Like, for instance, we joined a gym after a year of vaguely trying to keep in shape. We joined a gym last week. And, uh, you know, it's nice to go to a gym again, sort of, but not when you haven't gone to a gym in a really long time. It's painful. Last night we went to heated yoga. Honestly, it was I was on the verge of going to the hospital, as was Jenny. It was just... We're out of shape, and it's time to get back in shape. In any, and mentally, physically, spiritually, creatively, we're all craving normalcy. But yes, we are going to have a date, and uh, it will be nice. In fact, our, our wedding anniversary is coming up, so that has not. This has nothing to do with that, I don't think. But yeah, we're starting to do stuff. We might be going to a dinner party. We'll see. It's like it's. Hmm. Kind of normal. It's been weird because we live in this place and we kind of don't know anybody. So we know like a very small number of people and we haven't really obviously been able to make friends or even really kind of meet our neighbors. So it's all going to be good. So thinking about that has me thinking about all my friends who I haven't seen in a long time. I'm sure you're feeling that way too. And yeah, we can do the occasional Zoom call with them. Um, you know, text messaging and stuff. But I was thinking today, what if we do some old-fashioned letter writing? Letter writing. Write a letter. Draw a letter. Do an illustrated letter. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about that and give you some inspiration because at first you might be like, no way. What are you talking about, Gregory? I can just send an email. I'm not wasting my time with this. But think about how nice it would be if you received an illustrated letter from one of your friends who you haven't really gotten a chance to see for so long, right? That would be pretty special. And a pretty special kind of historical document, right? This moment in time, 100 years from now, people will look back and go, can you believe this is an illustrated letter from the pandemic? And people will say, that's amazing. What's a letter? Yeah. So that's what we're going to get into. We're going to get into doing some of that stuff. Um, I wanted to make a couple of mini announcements. I want to remind you, first of all, about um, Portrait Jam, which is our next workshop that's coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. Julie Johnson. This workshop is, if, if you ever had a desire to draw people quickly and to try and capture a likeness in a few strokes, I mean, it, it's a really great skill to have, you know, amaze your friends, confound your enemies, 
possibly have a job to fall back on. If times get tough, you could go out in the street and draw caricatures. But it's definitely a fun way to, to capture what's in front of you, to capture people that you, um, you know, see in the street as part of your urban sketching, perhaps. Um, if you're telling a story, you might want to be able to create characters. But this is really about how do you draw someone quickly, often with a brush or with ink, watercolor, um, graphite. And Julie is uh, a longtime fashion illustrator. So she goes to a runway show and knocks out amazing drawings of the models and their clothes. But she also can draw just beautiful portraits of people. And not just beautiful, but like, I don't know, they're, um, they're, they're stylish, they're spirited, they're really cool. It's going to be really fun. And, um, you know, I think we're going to knock out, I think it's like nine or ten portraits in a couple of hours of this workshop. So you can find out more about it there. Um, love a couple of another couple of things I want to tell you about. Um, I just want to remind you that you can text me. No, not that you can text me. Well, you can text me. You can text me there. If you text me at this number, you will be on my texting list, and I will send you messages that will be interesting, entertaining, inspiring. Who knows? Distracting, annoying, funny. A bunch of you all are. Y'all, see, I'm now living in sort of the South. Uh, a bunch of you nice people already texting with me. And, um, you know, I send out reminders that there's a draw with me coming up. And I send out, uh, you know, if I did a drawing, I'll take a picture of it and text it to you. If I see a cool thing online that I think might inspire you, I'll send it to you. And if you want to text me back, you can. And uh, I'll text with you, and you'll text with me, and back and forth, back and forth. So... It will be really nice. It only works in the United States or Canada, alas. But one day it will work in the rest of the world. Just get your vaccines, people, foreign people, and then I will text with you. I'm just not comfortable texting in international situations yet. No, I, I would love to text with you. It's just this technology is emerging. Um, yes, and one other thing is every Friday I write an essay. Well, I write it before Friday, but I send it out on Friday. And... It's, you know, for those of you who used to read my blog, it's like that, except you don't have to go to all the trouble of going to my blog. I'll just send it to you. And I do that every Friday. I've been doing it for a while now. And uh, a lot of people write back to me, which is unusual for a newsletter. Normally people think of that as a one-way thing, but the readers of Danny's essays don't for some reason, and they write back to me. And then I write back to them, and then they write back to me. It's just, I mean, this is my life writing, which is why I want to write a letter, because I just don't communicate with people enough. Mm, yes. Okay. Are we all set? Y'all? Um, can a beginner do portraits? Melly Willie is asking. Absolutely. This, this whole thing is to design to teach you this skill. You know, how do you catch on to it? If you're really advanced... Why you don't need to take Portrait Champ, but if you want to learn these skills, or maybe you're not used to drawing people, maybe you're used to drawing other things, and you always kind of shy away from drawing people, it's time to get on with that. Okay. So, um, here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to my desk and uh, show you my desk. Where's my desk? Uh, hello, desk. Here we are. All right, here's my desk. Here's a book that I've been looking at recently. It is a book about illustrated letters that all come from the Smithsonian's archive. So, not necessarily by historical or famous people, but things that were considered good enough to be in the Smithsonian. And this book is full of them, so I wanted to show you a few that I kind of thought were cool. Um, look at this. So this is a letter from 1834, written by uh, one of America's first professional sculptors. And he was going on a train from New York City to um, Richmond, Virginia, because he was going to 
make a sculpture there. And it was the first time he had ever been on a train. Imagine that. He'd never been on a train before. And so he's writing this letter to explain to his wife, what is it like on a train? How does it work? And what does it feel like? And he did this great little drawing here in sepia ink in the middle to kind of illustrate it. I love that. Of my car with a little hand pointing. So I love that kind of thing. Um, let's see some others. Here's a nice one. This is by Howard Finster, who was, he was a, f um, became a relatively famous outside artist, outsider artist. I think he did a Talking Heads album cover. But I love this as another example of a style of incorporating drawings into a letter. So he's writing, first of all, I like this sort of um, uppercase lettering that he does. But then he does these drawings, labels them, and the type, the type, the letters flow around it, you know, flow across and around it. So he maybe, I wonder if he did these drawings first and then he wrote the letter around it. Um, I love that guy. I love this sort of thing where it's just like sitting there in the midst of the letter, doing like a Kyber dance. This. Zoom in a bit. This is beautiful on so many different levels. So it's from 1894, and this is this young painter who has gone to Venice, and he's just writing a letter to his parents about all of the amazing fruit that he's been eating there. And he did all these great little watercolors of, of um, peaches and plums and this giant melon. And look at that handwriting. Come on. Look at that. Right? Yes. Look at this. This, I mean, this is from 1894. I woke up this way. Isn't that like an Instagram kind of meme? I woke up this way. Yeah, it was a thing that people did. Um, look at that. This is by uh, another painter writing a letter to his friends. Will Barnett is actually the person he's writing to. And these are just like observations um, just of the different people that this uh, Walt Kuhn, who's another painter, saw on a ship that he was traveling on. He just jotted this down, but I love that it's on the stationery with a flag in it. But this, man, I love that one. Look at that, because it's typed. And it's this guy writing to his uh, friends and his, there's dealers actually, he's a painter, talking about this, how inspired he was by this trip to Mexico and all the great paintings that he's been done. All right. So, oh, here, look. Different colored inks. Again, another cool thing. The book, I'm sorry, is called More Than Words. Illustrated letters by Liza Kerwin. More Than Words. Uh, yeah, so this book is full of cool stuff. These are also, I think, um, I think it had this works. That I think, no, that's not what I thought it was. So never mind. <laughs> you know what I was thinking it was? Um, was that it was... Uh, I was thinking that it was that... Um, there's a thing where people write... Let, write to, um, what about this? I just noticed this. Mahatma, mightiest mind and wonder of the worlds, supreme Parnassian and grand transcendental eagle of art. Full of yourself much, dude? Wow. Okay. And then, <laughs> I guess this represents uh, a grand transcendent uh, piece of art. Anyway, I was thinking about how uh, there, there's a thing where people write this way on a page, and then they'll write this way across on the same page. And at first glance, it looks like gobbledygook, and you can't read it. 
Um, so you can't read it because, but then if you look at it carefully, you can read it. But at first it just looks like a pastiche of crossed words like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe somebody knows what, ooh, that's pretty. So, all right, so there's lots of different examples of this in this book. I like it. Put that away. Okay, so um, what are we going to do? So, have you? Th can you think of somebody who you want to write a letter to? Failing that, would you like to write a letter to me? Think about it. If you can't think of anyone else to write to, I will gladly receive your letter. And if you write to me, um, you know, we'll take a bunch of those letters and um, maybe we'll do some kind of like a uh, uh, giveaway, a lottery. I'll send you a book or something like that. Just I'll pick somebody who does that. Okay, so if you want to write me a letter, I will put, um, I will, I'll write my email address. I mean, I'll write my address in a second. Here. You can write there. P.O. Box 163153, Columbus, Ohio, 43216. It's Columbus, Ohio, because that's where Morgan is. And while we've been moving around and stuff like that, we haven't really had a proper mailing address, so this is where it is. I'm going to get a proper thing here in Phoenix, but for now, P.O. Box 163153, Columbus, Ohio, 43216. All right. So if you write to me in the next, and then two weeks from now, let's see, a couple weeks, we'll do a drawing. Drawing as in selection as opposed to, we'll do, hopefully do more than one drawing between now and then. So, all right. Um, yes, ah, good. Okay, uh, Alexis has put it in the thing. Good, okay, Morgan, you're on it, right? Um, here's another thing I want to show you. Have you seen this? How cool are those? I mean, this is a, these are US postal stamps printed on like metallic foil, black stamps, so kind of, in a, in a cool way, sort of 60s aesthetic in some ways to me. Do you think, do you see that? Um, it's, I don't know, they're just, I think, really cool. And so maybe we'll include a stamp in this. But what I want to work on today is just the envelope. So we're just going to work on envelopes. And um, we'll see where we go with that. Should I show you how to make an envelope? I'm really not very good at it, but I know I know the idea behind it. Yes, as as Jenny points out, if you can't remember the address, you can find it at the bottom of every email that we send out. I think that we were like begging you to write to us, but we're not. We're just letting you know that we actually are physically exist physically. Ah, Sula says she makes envelopes out of magazines. That's brilliant. Very good. I'll just show you the I'll show you the technique that I learned about how to do it, and then um, you know you can decide whether you want to do it yourself. So you take a piece of paper and you take you fold it in half this way, and you kind of just you know fold that part like that. Don't, you don't have to go all the way through. If you do, then you'll have a crease down the middle of your envelope, which you may or may not like. And then um, fold it here. It's kind of like making a paper airplane, essentially. Because, which is appropriate, right? Because you're sending an air mail. So here's the beginning of that process. Um, yeah, so then we've got that. And then you kind of fold up these sides a little bit. And I'll explain to you in a minute, the more carefully you do this, the better. And as you can see, immediately, immediately I screw this up. And this is, see, this is, this is my problem. See that crease there? I'm just, I just suck at doing this kind of thing. I don't know why I insist on trying it. I just, I don't know. This is what 
kind of got me drummed out of bookbinding school. It's my inability. I mean, look at that. Look. Can you see that? Terrible. Terrible. All right. So this is folded up. And then basically all you do is you take this part, fold it up here, go across, and then you fold this part down. All right. And there it is, basically an envelope. And then you can, you know, run, put some tape here over a glue stick there. I mean, this is, you know, vaguely useful if you don't have an envelope or vaguely useful if you want to use like watercolor paper to make an envelope. But here's the thing, <laughs> just to give you an example. So here I tried to make it out of mixed media paper and it's just not good. It's just, look, you see that? That's typical of me. It's just not, doesn't line up. And then I folded this down thinking that, and now it's, it's even worse. It's even worse and lumpy and God. Um, here, let's see, here's another one. I tried to make this one. This is all I got. Oh yeah, this I tried to make out of a piece of paper that I pulled again out of a, like a, um, you know, like a pan. Look at that. Look at how terrible it is. I mean, it's just atrocious. Uh, what else? All right, here's, I tried to make a big one. It's like, oh, let me try and make a big one. Again, it just got all screwed. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So here's why that matters. Here's why it matters. It matters not to me. It matters because if you go to mail it, generally you can do it. But if it isn't like really straight, 90 degrees, the post office will be like, meh, we have to like charge you 10 times as much to do this or we're going to return it to you or some nonsense like that. So I'm just going to go with an envelope. But actually, you know what I'm going to work on? I'm going to use one of, one of these envelopes. So this is an envelope that is the envelope that I'm going to put the book in that I'm going to send you. The type of envelope. Not, this won't be the actual envelope because I'm going to address this to me at... at so just to show, just, remind, just in case I want to send myself something or I want to send Morgan something, I'm going to do this. So this is a nice kind of sturdy, absolutely straight, perfect professional envelope. And it's made of kind of nice paper. So, all right, where should we start? Let's start with a stamp. What do you think, a stamp? So we could start by putting on a stamp. I don't know if I want to do that right now. I just like these stamps, but I'm not sure yet. You know, but let's start by drawing, making a stamp. You know, I'm going to leave a bit of room for the real stamp, and then let's like make a stamp. So basically, a stamp is a square, and then it has. I'm not sure what this is called. I'm going to call it crinolation. I'm not sure that that's really what it is. It's kind of like um, pinking. You know, if you've ever done sewing, there are pinking shears. It's kind of like that. But whatever. It's the thing that makes it into a stamp. Um, what else am I going to do? I'm going to make. I'm going to make a draw with me stamp. Because I think it's high time that, uh, you know, that the government acknowledged the cultural importance of Draw With Me. Don't you agree? So this is going to be a Draw With Me stamp using the world famous Draw With Me icon. <laughs> and uh, how else does it go? It has like that, that, and then up. And then has, there you go, sort of it, eyebrows, and then up here it's going to say DWM. I like stamps, they have a particular aesthetic that is pretty cool, so um, yeah, and then we can just, uh, you know, knock out some, put in some color.
All right, so that's a drawer with a stamp, and uh, maybe it needs, you know, I, I want people to know that it's genuine, so I'm going to put in a little bit of, uh, you know, just a bit of drop shadow so that it looks three-dimensional. It doesn't just look like, hey, that's just a drawing of a stamp. You know, it's funny. When I was in advertising, one of the accounts that I worked on was the U.S. Postal Service. And I, you know, you, do you remember there used to be an old campaign? I think it was, we deliver for you or something like that. I don't know. It was just like advertising express mail or something. And uh, one of the interesting things about working for the Postal Service was I got to go and make another stamp. You know, I'll make a stamp in a series. Maybe this will just be a series. Um, right. So anyway, so I. When I worked on the Postal Service, they took me on a tour. They, were, they said, you know, you, we want you to understand exactly how this works. I got to meet the Postmaster General. It was pretty cool. Um, and so they took me to this giant place where they sort the mail, you know, because it comes in from the mailboxes, and then they have to separate it and send it out to the right zip codes and all that. And they have these giant machines that can look at each letter and, you know, can basically read where it's going and all that kind of stuff. So they were showing this and they were, you know, it was pretty cool technology. I was impressed by it. And they said, because what it can do is it could take a letter and it could figure out where the stamp was. It would scan each of the four corners and then it would say, okay, we know where the stamp is. And it has a stamp. That's cool. Uh, it's allowed to go on. And, you know, they didn't need to have a human being looking at it. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Just this machine just could figure that out. And then I said to them, so can the machine, how does the machine know whether you've put the right amount of postage on it? And they said, let's go and look, at, let's go and look over here. <laughs> they just completely ignored it. So I thought, oh, interesting. And I did a few experiments with sending, uh, good, the leaf blower. I did uh, some experiments with sending stamps with the wrong denomination. And it, it actually worked more often than not. So I, don't know, I hope that's not a federal crime to share that information with you. But So there we've got some stamps, and uh, I'll put that shadow on it later on. All right, so now I want to work on uh, addressing it. Joanna Tseng used to intern at the U.S. Postal Service. That sounds like the most uh, in uh, interesting, not interesting, not internship. All right, here we go opening the ink flask and I'm taking the dip pen ceremonial dip pen and I'm going to I'm going to write it to, I'll write to me.
All right. There it is. My name. Let's put down the address now. Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate, so I'm not talking. There's nothing wrong with the audio, as you can tell. That's, that's why I'm conveniently playing a uh, sound of a leaf blower, so you know that I'm still here and still alive. All right. Have you thought about who you're going to write to yet? Hopefully you have, because you're addressing the envelope. But if you're going to write to me, make it interesting. Make it amusing. Make it worth the postman's time. All right, there it is, the address. Now what? Now, this is a little nerve-wracking because, as you can see, a lot of this ink is still wet. One of the uh, problems with using a dip pen is, but I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to use this blue. So I like to draw a box around the address, just in case, you know, it isn't obvious that that's what this is. Maybe some little intersections here. Intersections are fun because you can then dudify them, doodle them, and uh, And maybe I'll do some red. Don't get this pen to work. So I'll put down. There we go. There we go. This is when your doodling skills from a couple weeks ago are going to come in handy because we're going to want to have some heavily, heavily um, decorated embellishments here. Don't just send me something that looks like it came from the gas company. Yeah. And Now what? I know. Let's just keep looking through a bag of tricks. What do we have here? Uh -huh. Put this away to dry for a second while I look at this. What do you think? Fancy. Letters, rubber stamps. Stamp pads. Date thing. 
cool. What else? What I have here. It's not cigars, it's stamp pads. Yep. Now these stamp pads, they've been a little abused, a little neglected, let's say. Haven't used them in a while. So we gotta see if they're uh, up to the job. Let's just take out a couple of them and see whether they will do it. stamps lying around, right? They used to have a lot more, but when I moved, I got rid of them. So, all right. Here we have this creature, and uh, we're going to rubber stamp it. What are we going to do with it? What kind of rubber stamping are we going to do, I think? I'm just going to maybe make a message to the postman, you know? Got to keep your your rubber stamps in, in order, alphabetical order. You can't just have them like jumbly in a pile on your desk. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Hey, you see these rubber stamps are, they're a little pre-pandemic. Are we gonna come up with an adjective for that? Like what's gonna be the word that we use to describe? Four times, I've heard that. four times. Seems a little bit kind of evangelical to me. Maybe that's the intention. So I kind of like that these letters are sort of messed up and that the colors are not working terribly well. That's cool. Can you see what I'm doing? No, I can't do it. I see you all are talking about um, nail art. Not art made by men, although some nail art is made by men. Ray Johnson, probably the greatest, almost like, in, almost inventor. Well, I think he invented the idea that nail art was, a, was an actual legitimate art movement. Ray Johnson. Um, but yeah, nail art absolutely is a thing. A beautiful thing. It can take lots of different forms. Like one form that I participated in, because I'm not, I'm not terribly interested in just like here. I'm just sending you fifty postcards, sending fifty postcards to fifty people, and they're all the same. I want to know. I want to have something that feels like personal and interesting and about you, like a real letter would be. You know, tell me about yourself. Tell me what's going on. But. I used to do a thing with um, a friend of mine where we had a sketchbook that was kind of like male art. And we would hold on to it for a week and just journal in it and then send it back. Um, and then the other person would write in it and draw in it and send it back and just went back and forth until we filled it up. I think he has it. I don't even know what it is. Um, and maybe I have it. It was less about the actual thing than it was about the fun of the <laughs> getting another, getting a thing. You know, here it is. Exciting. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Nick Bangkok. Yeah, people talk about it. I. Griffin and Sabine was kind of cool at the time. I've looked at his stuff recently, though. I don't think it. I don't think it aged that well. I feel like a lot of his stuff feels a little kind of.
computery now. But my feeling might be the minority. I think it's, you know, it was nice. Do you, know, do you remember that stuff? Griffin and Sabine and I know there were a few different ones that you did. Yeah. All right, so there's that. Now what are we going to do? Well, we're about to run out of time. In fact, we are running out of time. And I'm going to continue working on this. Believe me, that this, we haven't even begun this thing. We haven't even begun. We have a lot of stuff to do here. A lot of stuff. We have to fill this thing. We might have to do the back. And then we've got to do the letter. Whatever's going to go in here has to be awesome. Because, listen, think about what happens when you send a letter. Think about all the things that are involved. Think about how inexpensive it is to send a letter. We can gripe about it a bit. But it's kind of an amazing bargain, really. And you know what this needs? Cancellation stamp. Yeah. It definitely needs that. Maybe one of those kind of things. Perverse similitude, right? It's got to seem like that's a real thing. Then we put the real stamp right there. It look good in conjunction with these others. And then, of course, on the back, to write return address. You could write it here. But I want to fill this whole thing. I had this whole plan actually, I'm doing stuff with flowers and I was gonna draw flowers all in here, but I just haven't gotten around to that yet. So maybe that'll be the thing. But this isn't really going to you. This is not gonna to go to you. There'll be another one that goes to you. When you write to me, I will, or Morgan will gather all these things and send them to me and then uh, we'll pick one and, and I'll send you a nice envelope like this with your name and address on it and some kind of a cool thing inside. See what it is. It'll be cool. It'll be worth your time. Yes. So, boy. Um, that's... Oh, yes. And if you decide that you want to share what you've done in some form, you could do that. I mean, like say, you say you did a really cool envelope. You might want to take a picture of it or a cool letter. Take a picture of it. You know, if you want to blur out the, uh, you know, the, the confidential stuff you could. Um, but then you could post it and share it to hashtag SBS draw with me. So anyway, you can send me something. If, you, if, if I'm the lucky recipient of your thing, you can send it to me. And in two weeks, as long as it arrives within two weeks, we will, we will do something. We will send you something. I will send you something. I will send. I will select a person and send you, and I will probably thank everybody else because it's rude. Somebody sends you a letter, you're not going to ignore it. But definitely, either I'll do it or I'll force Morgan to do it. Morgan, I want you to do an illustrated letter for all 700 of these people and make it snappy. Yeah, I don't think that would go over well, but we'll figure it out. It's a nice problem to have. Okay, so. I'll see you all next time. In the meantime, those of you who are Spark members, I'll see you in the Draw With Me after party where we will continue this thing. I have some other stuff I want to show you too that's pretty cool. And uh, it was nice hanging out with you today. This has been really fun. I will see you and I look forward to your cards, letters, um, checks, gift baskets. Uh, you know, you can send me livestock, but don't send me livestock. Do not send me livestock. No animals of any kind. No living animals. No, no unliving animals either. Forget I said that. Send me a letter if you want to. Or a postcard. Or a telegram. I can't send a telegram. To, I don't think they even have telegrams anymore. But anyway, it was fun talking to you. Thanks for, uh, for hanging out with me and for drawing. I look forward to whatever it is you do with this particular assignment slash piece of inspiration slash 